you as our patient and we ourselves, we want the shortest possible treatment times. To that end, we need to know when it is the most favorable time for a treatment. The ideal timing will depend on two things, growth of the face and the development of the dentition. You as our patient and we ourselves, we want the shortest possible treatment times. To that end, we need to know when it is the most favorable time for a treatment. Orthodontics is complicated. The problem may be your teeth or growth of your face. In particular, growth of those bones which carry the teeth. The ideal time will depend on the type of deviation we have found. Are only your teeth affected? Or is it more the surrounding structures, I mean growth of the face? Or is it both? We have seen in one of the previous videos how the face grows. And we have seen how the dentition does develop. Both processes do depend on each other. In our orthodontic diagnostics and in treatment planning, we have to keep that in mind but they also are separate in a way. So it can be that there is only a deviation in development of the teeth or the dentition. Then, above all, we have to take care of the teeth and their position. But it can also be that an uneven development affects the growth of the entire face. And that is complicated. While some parts do not grow much at all, for example the eye sockets, it is exactly the area under the eyes that grows significantly. This is where orthodontics, as the name implies, not in English, but for example in German, takes place. After all, it is called craniofacial orthopedics or something like that in German, and not just orthodontics as it is called in English. To be more precise, we should call it the way what we do. So orthodontics and craniofacial orthopedics, also in English. The jaw bones do not just grow simply in length, width and in height. No, it is so complicated that I prefer to explain that in more detail in a separate video. So, and now we have made the most important preliminary explanations and we can summarize again. To begin with, we first need to clarify what kind of anomaly we have found. Does it affect the teeth or does it affect skeletal growth? And thus, we have four compartments that we have to take care of. To that end, we should rather have a look at the skull. The upper jaw, which is the skeletal compartment, the upper dental arch, the lower dental arch, and the lower jaw, which is the mandible. When we keep these four layers in mind, the way of treatment can be easily derived. Our patients may have skeletal deviations or growth deficiency, or they may have dental deviations, which means malaligned teeth. So, if there is something wrong with the growth of the jaw bones, we have to treat that the orthopedic way. And if only the teeth are malaligned, then we focus more on an orthodontic type of treatment. In addition, we have the problem of timing. Craniofacial growth is indeed very complicated. The growth pattern of the face has a different timing than the development of the teeth. As we know, there is the puberal growth spurt. It takes place during puberty. In girls, it begins with approximately 10 years of age and a little later in boys when they turn 12. With this information, I have compiled a time scheme which should show the ideal timing for treatment in orthodontics and in craniofacial orthopedics. Let's go through it. At the left margin, we have our skull. And to begin with, we draw the timelines for the four compartments. The upper jawbone, the upper dental arch, the lower dental arch, and the lower jawbone. During the time of the deciduous dentition, there are some jobs to do. Just think of the thumb sucking. This may affect the teeth in the upper jaw. They will jut out almost horizontally. 
but it may also affect the whole upper jaw being pulled forward in a way, and it may be that the rest of the thumb sucking hand pushes backwards the lower jaw if thumb sucking is really maintained too intensively. Then we can do something that it does not stay that way. Until then, though, children can suckle their thumbs or their pacifiers, I don't mind. This is something normal, as we all did as fetuses in the womb of our mothers. This should be weaned, however, at a certain time before the emergence of the permanent teeth, and that is, at the latest at five years of age, better maybe at four. Then the jawbone still has some time to spontaneously regain its original shape. And there are also rarely malalignments of the milk teeth when the jaw is too small. So the primary set of teeth is fully developed at the age of three. And between three and six years of age, a dentist or an orthodontist should examine the teeth if anything strikes you as strange. Speech disorders and malfunctions of the soft tissue, tongue and lips can also be examined and treated in the period of four to six years. Another important time is around six years. Then the incisors and the first molars of the permanent dentition erupt. If they emerge incorrectly, maybe in a crossbite, then we have to correct that early, at the age of six. These would then be treatment tasks that affect both dental arches, and therefore I place the two red arrows here. The first permanent molars are also now about to come. It must be checked whether they are also not in a crossbite. If this is not corrected, it can lead to an inhibition of growth in the upper jaw, and already we have arrived at the skeletal deviations. We look whether there is perhaps an unequal growth between the upper and the lower jaw. Then we should take the opportunity to correct growth now. If the bite position is not right now, it means if the upper jaw is too small and the lower jaw too big, then the teeth cannot fit together. As the first permanent teeth are now erupting, it should be checked whether they are skeletal bases. That means whether the uh, upper and the lower jaws are developing properly. If necessary, we can intervene here and above all uh, develop the upper jaw and maybe even reduce growth of the lower jaw. At least we should control the emergence of the permanent teeth and if necessary we could help them a bit. Let us take a quick look at a treatment example. This child has a crossbite in the primary dentition and the permanent teeth are about to come. With a functional regulator according to Professor Frankel, growth of the bone in which the teeth are located is stimulated if the child is able to wear the appliance well and then the teeth are taken along with the growth of the bone. And then the permanent incisors emerge in a proper position. In the comparison before and after you can see that again clearly. If we would not have corrected that in due time, then at least the second incisors on the right would have erupted in a crossbite also. And this must be prevented. A crossbite is harmful on the long run. As you see, at the age of six years we have to consider important developmental aspects. As all four layers are affected, you have seen the arrows at the upper jaw, at the lower jaw and at both of the dental arches. And the time axis of all four layers are labeled green at this age. Then there will be a pause. During that time we may just in case only control what the teeth are doing and rarely we have to interfere here actively. An important time period, however, is the growth spurt, just before puberty. It occurs, as we all know, a little earlier with girls than with boys, but we should rather see all the children at the age of 10. This mainly concerns the question of whether the lower jaw is growing properly or if it is too short. This can, of course, be corrected by taking advantage of the growth spurt. And therefore, I have marked the timeline for the lower jaw in green color here. And again, let us take a quick look at a treatment example. This patient had a growth deficiency in her lower jaw and therefore the dental arches could not fit together in a proper way. With a functional appliance and activator, we could foster the growth of the lower jaw at the time of the main growth spurt. And so it came more forward and took the teeth with it. And now the dental arches fit together as you can see in the comparison before and after. 
at about the same time, we have to look for tasks which are related to the dental arches only. This is about space control of the posterior region, in particular the canine and the first and the second bicuspids. We have to make sure that there is enough space for all of the teeth. And sometimes we have to do something to create space. Sometimes we use space maintainers or, as shown here in the two figures below the diagram, we actively intervene to create space for the emergence of all teeth, either with fixed appliances or with sequential aligners. We individually have to decide what is the best solution for the patient. When all teeth have erupted, with the exception of the wisdom teeth, of course, they only come after 18 or even never. So when all permanent teeth have erupted, then we see whether they are all in their proper position or not. We may then correct rotations, crowding and angulations of teeth for a treatment period of about one year. That is how long fixed braces or aligners have to be worn. Only in really severe cases, for example, if an impacted canine has to be retrieved and aligned into the dental arch, can it take significantly longer. This only applies to the two dental compartments again. Skeletal growth issues should have been corrected in the meantime. The dentition is now properly developed, but because, firstly, the teeth migrate for a lifetime and secondly, because growth of the face does really never stop completely, but continues, we have more and more, even more than 50% of adult patients. So we have a great amount of orthodontic procedures in adults. This affects all four compartments of our timeline. This can also affect the maxillofacial surgery that we plan and carry out together with the surgeons. Most of the cases, this is done in adult patients. In exceptional cases, we also perform early surgery in adolescence. And almost the most important topic is referred to retention procedures at the very end of every active treatment. But it has to last for life. This is underestimated by so many patients. We have so many young patients around their mid-twenties who had had orthodontic treatment as children or as adolescents with good treatment outcomes, but at some point they did no longer wear their retainers and the retention wires that were fixed with composite were broken and maybe were taken out. Tooth movement is so slow, but at some point you will notice it. So retention, that means holding the teeth in their proper position against the ongoing tendency of migration of the teeth must last lifelong. I made an extra video for this. This is so important. So then we are done with this scheme. So we have got an overview of the question of whether there is an ideal timing for treatment. And yes, there is. But of course, we can also help patients who maybe come too late for an appointment or a consultation, but we wanted to determine the ideal time. And like any scheme, it may be a bit too rigid, but it helps, at least for me.